this report was released in the last few days? Yeah, so, um, yes, thank you for that question, Steve. So, yeah, so, you know, unfortunately, the report was just released um, on July 20th. Um, I can tell you that I've been calling and meeting. I've met with Brett Smiley, Dorenda Keene last year. We met with the governor. We met with the prior governor. This report was actually issued last year. This report, um, we were told that the governor, um, the previous governor, had it since about November of last year. We were also informed that it would be released shortly thereafter. She reviewed it. Well, if, if we could count, right, it's probably about eight months by now. They just released it um, on the 20th of this month. Why did it take them so long? If you got the report last year, why would it take you months later for you to issue a report when you know it's bad? Are you just protecting your political interest? Are you just protecting your office or your desire to get to higher office? Um, while black and brown and women businesses are suffering, we also know that we were in the middle of a pandemic where 41% of black businesses are actually closed their doors forever. So that's a great question, right? We should get to the bottom of it. The other thing that I should note, um, the people that actually did the study, they were nowhere around this year to answer any questions. Hence, because they gave the report last year. They're already done, they got paid. Why would they show up in July to answer any question when they issued it last year, right? See why they weren't available, right? So um, the state, when they shared the report recently, they did not take any question. They actually disabled the chat feature. So if you're on this meeting listening to them presenting this data to you, you could not pose any question. What are they? What do they have to hide? Why are they hiding? Why they're not willing to take questions, right? The instruction was you have to send an email and somebody will get back to you, right? Um, any other question? Um, last year, uh, during COVID, they suspended this law. And yes. Though it doesn't seem to be an effective law, and I'm wondering why they would suspend an ineffective law. I mean, among other things, but... Yeah, so that's yeah. a great question. So really, um, the MBEWMB law, they basically, the governor said it was waived as a result of the pandemic, and she wanted to ensure that uh, really about, you know, any emergency came up and they had to re react to COVID, um, they wanted to make sure that they didn't have this requirement because they could not find MBEs or WMBEs, right? So basically, they waived the MBE, WMB law. $34 million was spent to build the makeshift hospital for COVID-19. Zero dollar went to a minority business enterprise or a woman in business enterprise, right? How much was that again? 30, it's big zero. Big zero. Af you know the number, Alan. Um, yes. Zero's an easy number to remember. Exactly, I knew you would remember that. Um, so absolutely, but what I just heard from Senator um, Kano, Sandra, she's traveling um, for a wedding, but what she shared with me um, yesterday when we talked was that there was a bill that was actually passed in both the, the House and the, the Senate, which would um, take away the right for the governor to be able to waive this law. I heard from um, the senator that it's currently sitting on the governor's desk. He does not intend to sign it. I guess it's going to just become law on its own and he doesn't want to wait on it, right? So why is that? He's not willing to take a position. Hey, Governor McKee, do the right thing. We want to know your position on this bill. It's, it's, it's actually voted on in both the Senate and the House. Why aren't you reacting to it? Let us know your position on it. Don't just let it automatically go into law, right? Um, I wish she was here because she had a um, strong message for the governor as well as you know the, what we've been doing for the last 10 years. I've been working very closely with her over the last 10 years and she sends her regrets not being here but certainly um, has expressed um, approval of what we're doing. In addition, she has called on the governor and the leadership team to step up and do more as it relates to compliance. And uh, one more question, uh, Jim Dinson mentioned uh maybe increasing the 10% because we have new... Oh, yeah, so yeah. one question was around, should we increase the uh, participation, right? So currently it's 10% for both MBEs and WMBEs. So we made a recommendation um, last year to Governor Ramonda and we, we suggested, or this you know, recommendation that we gave was to mirror 
what we saw in, like, say, Connecticut, right? Or tie back to the population, right? So one of the things that we would break out women, right? One mm -hmm. goal for women-owned businesses and one goal for minorities. So what we're saying, instead of at 10% for white women as well as minority um, businesses, you would break that out and have a women goal separate, which would be different, right? It makes sense. So we're seeing that in Boston, we're seeing that in Connecticut, we're seeing it in New York. And I think Rhode Island should leverage best practices, right? If we can see information and see what practices that are working really well, why not leverage that in Rhode Island? So the recommendation is for us to have a separate goal for you know, minorities and then a separate goal for women business enterprises. Thank you for that question. So the question is whether Reba has had a meeting um, with either the governor or the lieutenant governor. Um, the answer is no. Um, I was told, so the request has been in since the mayor, since the governor got in office, what was it, February? Or whenever he got in. Um, the request has been in there. Um, I know that it was resurfaced this week. I was told that the lieutenant governor is going on vacation um, with her family, so I may get a meet in um, mid-August or late or early September. And then for the governor, I have not yet a request yet, um, but I know they have my the request from the Rhode Island Black Business Association. So we stand ready. Um, you know, it's unfortunate. I've seen the photos on social media that these leaders continue to meet with white-led business groups. But when it comes to meeting with black or brown business group and Oscar, my partner from the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, thank you for being here, my friend. When we, when we request meeting of these offices and these leaders, it's a struggle, right? And I don't know, I don't understand it because when black or brown businesses or women-owned businesses are creating jobs, they're actually jobs for Rhode Islanders. And when they create jobs and put people to work, it actually impacts the state's economy from a favorable way, right? It pays into the tax road. People are able to buy properties, they pay property taxes, we reduce crime, all of these great things. It's a win-win across the board. So I don't see why there's a challenge, right? Or people don't even see us. The sad part is they're not even in some cases seeing us, but the fact that we're here, I don't think they'll be able to ignore us any longer. But thank you for that question. Any last question? All right, so guys, I want to thank you all for being here. We appreciate you. If you wouldn't mind hanging around after the media leaves for a photo up, we have photographers here. I would love to get some pictures of the speakers as well as all the people that love the work that we're doing. If you want to be a part of this um, picture, we would love to have you be a part of it. Thank you guys so much. Have a great day, everyone.